welcome to another 7 minutes or less. Now I've said before that occasionally you come across a bargain you just can't say no to. There were some games on offer on the Nintendo eShop, so I had a look through and there were some that were not only a bargain, but they actually sounded really good. One of those games was Master Reboot. Master Reboot, developed by Wales Interactive, was released in October 2013 and put under the category of first person action adventure game. I said before that I love all things horror, but I don't really get to play that many horror games, so I was thrilled when it turned out that Master Reboot was part horror. Thing is, a game needs more than a few scares to be any good. As usual, the best place to start would probably be with the plot. Master Reboot takes place around 2029, where a company, Mystery Foundation, has developed a system where... Actually, I'll let them tell you what they do. We are proud to introduce to you the Soul Cloud. Users upload their memories, together with vital personality statistics and traits, to our dedicated servers, where our industry-leading engineers sculpt this information into digital cities, towns and gardens. Upon the user's expiration, a digital soul is created which can relive these memories again and again. What's more, the deceased's family and friends can visit their soul whenever they like, making death a thing of the past. There are problems in the soul cloud, so you've gone in to find out what's gone wrong, who caused it, why, and what it all has to do with someone's murder. After a brief section that pretty much acts as a tutorial and explains what's going on, you end up in the soul cloud where you can access several memory areas, and this is where the majority of the game takes place. Each area has puzzles to solve, and once you finish the area, you get a short section with more puzzles or some other random event that leads up to a memory. you end up back in the Soul Cloud main hub, ready for the next memory. There are also blue ducks hidden in each stage, which give a little more insight. I did struggle a tad to understand the story, and by the end I only had a rough idea what was going on, but a second playthrough really helped. You can review the duck info any time, and I had missed some on my first run, but made sure I got them all on the second, as well as looked back through them a few times, and I think I just about got it all sus. There are a few nice twists along the way, and I've really looked forward to seeing the next memory. Even the tidbits the ducks provided made interesting reading, and I was always disappointed when it turned out I'd missed some. The puzzles themselves were probably the best part of the game. The first area I was in had me solving puzzles to find three keys to unlock a wardrobe that contained the memory. I was a tad worried that every stage would just be searching for three keys, but luckily the next area was completely different, as were all the ones that followed. There were some similarities, sure, like having to find X number of item A, but it never felt like the developers had just copy and pasted sections from earlier in the game. Not only was it great fun working out all the puzzles, but I got a great sense of accomplishment when I solved them. Puzzles that are just a case of find item A, use it in place B for effect C, I don't really consider to be proper puzzles, and while Master Reboot had a few places that happened, there were usually other puzzles to get the item, or it wasn't just a case of putting it in a certain place. There was only one puzzle I ended up having to randomly guess, involving working out the code to a door, so let's see how you do. It's a four digit code and the first number is given to you being seven. There are weird symbols above the door and in one of the nearby mausoleums you find this. That is literally all you are given, so here are the symbols above the door. Go ahead, see if you can work out the rest of the code. Seven something something something. Good luck. it out yet? Well, maybe we'll come back to it if I remember, but this was the only puzzle that gave me any trouble, mainly because I didn't even notice the big board was there the first time, let alone knowing to use it to work out the code. The rest of the puzzles needed a little bit of thinking time, and I got most of them without too much trouble, but they were still some damn good puzzles. My only criticism is that occasionally there are sections with a time limit, which is fair enough, but when you know you aren't going to make it, there isn't a retry, restart from last checkpoint option, or anything like that, so you have to sit and wait for the time to run out before being able to try again. Luckily these sections don't happen that often, so I actually looked forward to entering a new area to see what sweet puzzles would be waiting for me, and what freaky stuff lies in wait as the horror side of things was pretty decent. 
it genuinely relied on jump scares, but there were plenty of occasions where really freaky stuff happened, even before you entered the first memory, and the atmosphere really drew me in. The main enemy is a weird girl with blue glowing eyes, and she messes with you in pretty much every level. You can't fight at all, you have to run and try to get to a safe place before she gets you, or hide and hope you haven't been spotted. Sure, it's all been done before in other games, but it still makes for some tense moments as you wait to see your fate. <laughs> There are some rather concerning pictures dotted around the levels that are rather creepy. Certain things happened every time you went to a specific place, and while they were scary or made me jump the first time, the novelty soon wears off. However, there were many times when things happened that were really tense. After a short scene or a glance in the wrong direction, it regularly became a case of SHIT! RUN 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 RUN! Balls. There are a few horror cliches, mainly revolving around the jump scares, but it doesn't use them all the time, so the ones it does use tend to be rather effective. There's also a section where the game has a concussion and thinks it's Slenderman, but even so, it did the horror job rather well. Thing is, I made the schoolboy error of leaving my bedroom door open when I was playing the game in the dark, and my bastard of a flatmate sneaks up on me and scares the bejesus out of me, causing me to scream like the butch geezer I am. All in all, I thoroughly enjoyed Master Reboot and would certainly recommend it, even though it's probably not on offer anymore. I got the game for less than £4, but I think full price is around 9 maybe 10 so it's still a bargain and is available on pretty much every console. There are a few minor annoyances with the game, but there's so much great stuff about it, they easily make up for it. See you next time. <laughs>I guess you want to know the answer to this puzzle, right? Well, the code is 7147. Can you see it? Follow the arrows. The first one is down here pointing up. Following the arrow gets you VII Roman numerals for 7. So it's 7147. To the people at Wales Interactive, whoever thought of that is a genius.